So because it's a dark and rainy day here in London, Ontario, I decided I was going to experiment a little bit more with improvised semiconductor devices. Now in the past I've built a couple crystal radios out of natural semiconductor minerals such as iron pyrite and galena, and poking them with a little sewing needle to form a little Scotchy diode. If you're not familiar with this process and you're enthusiastic about electronics, I suggest you read up on it and maybe undertake it for yourself. You'll definitely learn a lot about the field. So one problem with Scotchy diodes formed that way, just a metal needle poking pyrite, for example, is that they're not electronically that robust. Uh, they fold into ohmic resistances under relatively small voltages or currents. One thing I just happened upon by accident when using a phosphor bronze guitar string as the poking needle is that if I first heat the needle up to red hot, there's an oxide layer that forms around it. And now when I use it as a needle to poke a piece of pyrite, the resulting junction has a much higher forward breakdown voltage, but can actually handle serious current and serious voltages in either direction. So to show you how stable the resulting diode is, I have this little grain of wheat light bulb lit up through a fresh 9 volt battery that's forward biasing one of these diodes. So I can go ahead and reverse the polarity of the 9 volt and show you that it really is a diode. That filament isn't heating up at all. It's not really that convincing of a demo because the hundred or so microamps of reverse current going on is obviously not going to light up the filament at all. But uh, just take my word for it that it's it's pretty rugged for this kind of diode, even, even just to, to handle 9 volts in either direction. So yeah, that's pretty cool. What I set out to do next was to put together a little point contact transistor. Now this might not actually be the most correct term for this because that would involve electroforming and ending up with a device that actually has a positive current gain. <clears throat> what I was able to pull off is something like this depicted in this circuit. It's a mutual Scott key structure that shows an inversion between the input and the output. The reason it inverts is because the Scott key barriers of the two diodes significantly overlap. And so the conduction or blocking of each one is is a mutual property between the two. What was interesting about this exercise is that when the needles are far apart, the relationship between the input and the output is a, is a positive correlation. It's only as you push these two needles super close together, below a millimeter, well closer than a millimeter, that the gain of this device goes through zero and becomes inverting. And I was actually able to get this thing within a few dB of a unity gained inversion. So that means that there is a pretty good coupling going on there. So that was pretty cool. The reason the it had a positive correlation when the needles are far apart is that the pyrite has this little stray resistance to ground. And so I'm sure you can see that that's just a, it just allows a path between, from input to output. So it was a neat little exercise that way, pretty definitive. So yeah, after this, I am gonna try some electroforming and try and get a transistor working. So. Stay tuned for that.